A multimodal model that can understand images and texts and respond in text form, which can perform at a human level in some professional and academic evaluations, although it is less capable than humans in real-life scenarios. This is the one-sentence introduction of the GPT-4, announced on March 14. There are very important messages in this definition. The most important message is that the child has grown up. Our child is leaving us behind in all of the LSAT, STI, art history, writing, reading, biology, calculus, which many of us would have failed just yesterday when we said mom and dad. He can get the points to get into the university he wants from all of them. By machine learning, deep learning, let alone passing exams, we were trying to teach him something, or for a long time, yesterday's child is now in a position to teach us all about these subjects and many of them. The machine is now starting to teach while continuing to learn. We all ask him something, we are stunned by the incredibly detailed answers we get. Yes, you do realize that, don't you? Some thresholds are being crossed, perhaps they have been crossed. GPT-4 has arrived. GPT. You must have heard of it. But for those who have heard it for the first time, let's open it up a little, what are we talking about? What we call GPT is generative, pre-trained, transformer. Although the name is not very descriptive, we are talking about a machine learning model here. This is a model that works with a neural network structure. The reason it is called a neural network is because it resembles the structure of neurons in our brain. In essence, an algorithm that responds to you in the form of text for now using a lot of data, that is, in a nutshell, the internet. First of all, we need to understand that none of this is magic. What are machine learning and deep learning? When we understand this well, you can understand very well that this is not magic. Actually, we can explain machine learning quite simply like this. Machine learning, the ability of a machine to learn to do anything without you having to program it. There are huge amounts of data at stake here, which is what there is a lot of data right now, right? Computers, machines use this huge data, apply algorithms to see the connections and meaningful relationships in this data and make predictions using them. Deep learning is a branch of this. It's about imitating people even more here. You can tell machine learning what it needs to look for decoupled between the data. In deep learning, on the other hand, you only give the data and expect him to make sense out of this data. So what's the deal here? Data. We're talking about a huge, terrible amount of data. This is what GPT has been trying to do from the very beginning. A worker, an assistant, who will help you in this mess, which, in a sense, has started to turn into an information dump along with the internet. Instead of trying to find the answer to the question in your mind one by one with the data you will collect from here to there, you are asking the GPT, which is trained for this, and it brings you the most meaningful answer from a lot of data. Do you understand how important this is, don't you? And that it's not magic. This is very important because we are really not in a position to deal with so much data anymore. We really need a guide. This is GPT in its simplest form. And for the first time we had this pleasure with this deep neural network model known as GPT-3 and the chat GPT service offered by this model. It was a great thing. No matter what we asked, we somehow got a meaningful answer and saved an incredible amount of time. And I know that many people who can use it in the right way have gained years in a professional sense. Programmers, especially data analysts, teachers, researchers, professors, lawyers, when they use it correctly, when they ask the right questions, they have started to be able to do things that they could never do themselves. But this is not a new thing, so these types of models, machine learning models have been around for years. So what's changed here? GPT has largely solved the most important point that these models failed from the very beginning. Language. Yes, before that, although the data links found the answers, they could not express it to you. Again, you had to explain it in some way, translate it into human language. Here are the answers that GPT gave to the questions you asked were so human. 
things are starting to change here. Convincing enough to make you believe that a person wrote it. Yes, I think that's what changes the whole story. Convincing. He makes you believe that he is a human being. He talks like us, writes like us, like us. This is something that Alan Turing said we can do about whether a machine has unmanned intelligence, something that the Turing test is also looking for. Humanoid, but in every sense. At the moment, yes, not so much. But in what sense is it the first time in history that we are so similar for the first time? Language. We have that ability that makes us different, or if you want, let's not get too involved here now. If you wish, we will discuss this in a separate video entitled and should we accept a machine as a human. But GPT seems to be better than us, isn't it, in some ways. Now let's get to GPT-4. To the model that was published the other day and made a mess. Now it will be more accurate to compare it with GPT-3 to understand this. When we looked at GPT-3, the machine learning parameter was around 175 billion. You can think of it as processing capacity. 175 billion. Do you know how much is in GPT-4? Hold on tight, it's over 100 trillion. 100 trillion parameters against 175 billion. We can open it like this without going into the technical details. The GPT-3 resembled a human being, especially in terms of language skills. That means he's going to improve it a lot more. It will become more humanoid. More importantly, in GPT-3, we could only ask questions as text or by typing. Now we will also be able to present visuals. For example, in the new model, we will be able to show a photo, an image and ask him to comment on it, analyze it, why it is funny or something like that. Yes, we show a sample meme and say can you tell me about this meme. For a tray with crispy chickens lined up here to resemble a world map, Sometimes I look at photos of the world taken from space and admire its beauty, there is a meme with a description. And GPT-4 responds like this, a joke that combines two unrelated things, photos of the world taken from space and crispy chickens. The text on the meme says that this photo is a beautiful photo of the world taken from space. However, there are actually crispy chickens and very little resembles a world map. The joke here makes a statement as if it emerges from an unexpected mixture of text and visual. Look, this example alone shows what we are facing. There is something in front of us that thinks like a human, sees like a human, can see connections like a human, and most importantly, even irrelevant connections. It's not like magic, we said at first, but it's like, right? Is it over? Of course it's not over. The main big thing is that this model has caught up with us on issues that are directly good for our lives. For example, exams. The most important turning points of all of us are often. Let's look at this list. Here is a list of exams that GPT-4 takes, and people in real life also take. And the GPT-4 scores are also in front of us. For example, the exam known as the LSAT. It is the most important exam for students who want to study law, especially in America. It's a pretty tough test, too. If you want to study law at Harvard, you need to get a score above 170. GPT-4 took 163. Although he misses Harvard with this score, he can enter universities such as Virginia, Boston, California, Berkeley. You can see the list is getting longer. He got an above-average grade on almost all law-related exams. In some exams, the only competitor, the previous GPT-3, was among the worst 10%, while GPT-4 managed to get into the top 10%. There is also the production side of the business. As I mentioned earlier, when used correctly, you can be a giant squad on your own. Here is an assistant who writes code for you, does design, tells you how to build your company, how to grow it, and can guide you step by step from marketing to sales. Let's give a few examples here, 
look what users from all over the world who started using this assistant immediately did. Someone printed out games like Snake or Pong from the beginning just by saying the instructions. GPT-4 wrote the game from the very beginning. Someone made and released an extension for Chrome without knowing any code. Someone has prepared a case file without the need for a lawyer. We will see many more examples in the coming days. There is also a corporate side to this business. Microsoft just announced Copilot two weeks ago. With this service integrated into applications such as Word, you can plan your meetings in advance, ask him to convert your files to Excel or PowerPoint presentation, and ask him to take notes in meetings. Yes, by listening to meetings, he can write down everything in writing and also report on the action items, what needs to be done, decisions taken. Many companies are currently thinking about how we can integrate this. This is a development that will touch everything, but everything. To summarize, GPT-4 is much better than its previous versions or any machine learning model in the world in terms of accuracy of answers and analysis, along with more processing capacity. But it is definitely not perfect. This should not be forgotten. But for the moment, compared to all the artificial intelligence systems in the world, it is the most creative model with the widest information database. Since you can also make visual input, your usage possibilities have also increased incredibly. For example, in the introductory presentation, we saw that he was able to convert a simple instruction he wrote on a piece of paper into a real web page. However, the number of words that previously seemed insufficient was increased to 25,000 words. You can have a text of 25,000 words analyzed, extract notes from it, extract a summary, or do whatever you need. You can also print stories and articles up to 25,000 words. When we use it correctly, we can do many things that humanity wastes time on and devote more time to more creative work. So we can focus on the main problems. In fact, in a nutshell, we are currently entering a new era, the results of which no one is quite sure yet. To see where this is going, it excites me personally. Because this development can also open many new doors that I have not mentioned here yet. Do you know what the most striking thing is? While I was so surprised by GPT-3 chat GPT and haven't digested it yet, such a rapid development took place in a very short time, that is, a 30-year, 50-year development in a few days. Goodbye, see you in the next video. Don't forget to like, subscribe and turn on notifications. I'm glad you're with me.